Hey, party people, Kevin back with getting to know ICC. And this is an incredible treat for me because I have one of my favorite people on the planet. I feel like I say that every video, but I super mean it this time. I have my friend, Nicole Harvey with me. She is a small group leader for our sixth grade girls in our EDGE program in religious education or PSR. And I want to welcome her. Nicole, hey, how are you doing? Hey, I'm doing good. Awesome. So will you start by telling us a little bit about yourself and your history in the parish? Yes. So my name's Nicole. I'm 22 years old, and I am graduating from LSU this year. Yay. <laughs> um, uh, I've been going to Immaculate Conception since Mother's Day out, and I have really deep roots with the Catholic Church and my faith, and I really enjoy teaching catechism to the sixth grade girls in our edge program. Awesome, awesome. So, you know, this little video interview is an experiment where I just want to get to know people in our parish and let them see that we can still create community even when we're sheltering in place and, and, and things like that. So I'm going to ask you some questions, some of which you're prepared for. No, I'm kidding. And we'll do some spiritual <laughs> ones, and then we'll do some ones about waste, uh, not wasting, but um, passing time in a quarantine. Does that sound all right? Yeah. That sounds okay. Sounds all good. right. So question one, what's your favorite Catholic prayer? Uh, Hail Mary. Tell me why. Uh, I love the Hail Mary because it just washes so much peace over me when I say it, like to truly think about how she committed to be in the embodiment to raise and like grow Christ in her. And I, I just love it. I feel like if she can do that. She can help me through anything. Come on. All right. Um, any other prayers that you um, tend to lean on or anything like that? Um. I think that's kind of my main one that I say the most. That's your main one? All right. So rosaries are always a fun trip for me. <laughs> right. Um, all my ADHD warriors out there who, like me, um, have to struggle through a rosary, um, I, feel you. I feel that big time. So let me ask you this. Um, do you have a particular saint that is meaningful to you? you? It can be your confirmation saint, but it could be a different one as well. I've always connected, which is weird. He's not my confirmation saint, but with St. Jude. And I think it's because that was my mom's confirmation saint. And so growing up, she always talked about him and would always say, like, we're going to say a prayer to St. Jude, like, for little things. But I don't know. It's just a habit that I grew up with. So I do it all the time now. And I, I feel really? like I feel bad. I rarely pray to my confirmation saint. Well, if you don't mind me asking, who was your confirmation saint? It was, um, it was St. Augustine. Okay. So that's not unusual. You've grown. That was five years ago that you got confirmed yeah. relatively, if I remember correctly. And um, I want to tell you something there. Um, have you ever heard of the TV show All in the Family? No. Yeah, it was way before you were born. And so they <laughs> created all these TV shows in the 70s and the 80s named Norman Lear. And he is just old school Hollywood, like royalty. And I was listening to an interview with him a few years ago, and he said something that struck me that I'll never forget. He said, I'm a completely different person than I was five years ago. All right. But Nicole, can I tell you what was super interesting about him saying that? Yeah. When he said it, he was 93. So hmm. can you imagine being the type of person who is curious and grows and learns at such a rate? that when you're 93, you feel like you're completely different than you were when you were 88. I mean, how amazing is that? That is crazy. So that's like, that's like my, my life's goal, right? But <laughs> somehow one day deserve my wife. I want to be Norman Lear and always think that I'm a completely different person because of what I've learned. I, that was an old man way of saying it is not unusual at all that five years ago you had St. Augustine and today you lean more towards St. Jude. And remind me when we're not, I, I don't mind sharing this on camera, but it's a long story. Remind me 
being a convert and never having prayed to and with saints, I have an incredible St. Jude story. Remind me to tell you. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. So we've done your favorite saint, your favorite prayer. Um, is there a person in the Bible that you um, connect with or inspired by or you identify with? Um, I'm really inspired by the story of Esther in the Bible. I like how she's an, an empowering woman in the Bible. She went against all the odds and spoke up against the king and fought for her people and did God's will and just trusted in him. And I don't know. I want to do the same. No, I think that's a great answer. You know, as a dad, um, I'm famous for saying to my sons, they'll pitch me an idea, right? And I'm like, look, this could end five ways and four of them are bad. You know, <laughs> like that's what Esther did. Like the, what Esther did could have gone so many terrible ways. Yeah. And because it was the Holy Spirit and because it was God and because she was letting God lead her, it went the one right way that it could, you know? So that's very interesting that you um, are inspired by a bold, empowered female leader. Very interesting. I like that. Um, okay. So do you, all right. So we've talked about Esther. Um, that's who you identify with. Um, tell me, is there any other like Bible story? I'll tell you what, let's do books. So give me a book that has inspired you or help you grow spiritually or something like that. Um, the Confessions of St. Augustine. Really? I just read it uh, this past fall. Father Frank recommended it to me and it was really, really life changing to like open up and like really like decipher everything. Shut and it's crazy that he Frank. wrote that. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> he wrote that forever ago and it touches people like in today's age and today's time still. It's a very Isn't powerful it? read. It's very, very interesting that after 50 plus years of ministry, Father Frank would have a decent book to recommend to someone, right? <laughs> yeah. All right, yeah. Okay, cool, cool. Um, let me see. Do I have any more spiritual or catholic -y questions for you? Or, I mean, do you have it? Let me ask you this. Do you have a God story in that? Has there ever been a time in your life where you knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that God showed up, God intervened, or God was present, or you learned something about God that you never knew before that might have changed the direction of how things were going? Um, when I graduated high school, I kind of got away from the church a little bit. I think just independence and freedom and moving out, but I didn't go to church for like a year, which is really unlike me. And so then when I got back into church just that first Sunday and went in, sat in the pew and like, I don't, it was just like, God was like, just put such this warm feeling in my heart. And it's just like, like a wave of peace washed over me. Like, I don't know, like you're home for the first time and like receiving communion for that time was just like so different and than I've ever received it before. And I was like, I'm never leaving church again. Like this is where I'm meant to be. So look, Nicole, you and I have a deal where um, whenever I'm too much of a dad or too much of a teacher, you'll tell me to stop, right? Yeah. Okay. I want you from this point forward, if you haven't already, I want you to call that your God happy place. Okay. And every time you're struggling or you're looking at darkness or it's an, a time, I don't like so many people are quarantined right now, babe, you know, mm -hmm. and, and all this, like, go to your God happy place. And I want you to go right back to that pew. You looked up at the crucifix. You expected to feel damnation, condemnation, right? To mm. the third degree, which is what, what parents do, right? And yeah. that's not what you felt. You felt belonging, welcoming, home. Um, it reminds me of the prodigal son where he said, and while the son was a long way off, the father saw him and ran to him. It's like, how did he see him from a long way off? And the answer is he was looking for him the whole time, you know? Yeah. It's like God was looking for you that whole time and you showed up at his, in his home, right? And you got hug, you got love, and you got his real presence, right? 
Yeah. That's a, that's such a beautiful, I hope everybody watches these videos just to hear <laughs> what a great story. Okay. Let's do some ways to pass time in the quarantine. Are you ready to do that? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Give me a movie. I, you know, I love your youthful exuberance. Everyone <laughs> asks, give me a movie that's like 10 years old or more, but I, you know, you may not have those. I don't know, but give me an old school movie. And here's, here's my definition for it. You ready? Okay. Every time you're clicking through the channels and you see this movie, you stop and you watch it no matter where it is. What's that movie for you? Goodwill hunting. Shut the front door. <laughs> I'm serious. That's I mine. Know. I love that movie. That and Shawshank Redemption. Ooh, Shawshank Redemption's good. How you like them apples? Okay. <laughs> All right. Give me the best movie that you've seen in like the last year or two. Oh, you're going to make fun of me. But I I'm really not. liked Aladdin. <laughs> the new Aladdin? Yes. I don't know if it's because my nephew made me watch it a billion times. Or <laughs> well, I can tell you this. I'm not going to make fun of you. Very quick story. Um, for me when my teenage years is when Aladdin came out, my senior year in high school, this, don't, don't make fun of me. Mm -hmm. Lion, King came, Lion King came out my senior year in high school. Right? That's how old yeah. I am. So when both of them came out live action in the past couple of years, I just couldn't see Will Smith as the genie. And so I was like, forget that. Oh, but Lion King said, and Lion King was okay. But Lion King was good. I respect in this world says Aladdin was the best. It was so good. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to trust you right here. You got to watch it. <laughs> so many times that the young, what, what, what was Timothy, right? He was like, don't let them look down on you because of your youth, but lead them, right? So I'm going to let you lead me. And I give you my word, I will watch Aladdin in this dadgum quarantine. All right. I want a movie review after. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Speaking of quarantine you know we got a binge right mm -hmm. give me sure. two or three tv shows that are great to run through in a quarantine i have already finished the office once and i'm probably going to take a round two on it i am not afraid to tell you that this is my wife's just show um i think she's seen it like 17 times Oh, I love it. I can probably quote almost every episode. <laughs> when I can, matter of fact, I can tell you when she's under a lot of stress because she is cranking out the episodes one after another. And it, you can tell it becomes her like background comfort. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And she's like, ah, oh. you know, <laughs> thank you. Dunder Mifflin, Dunder Mifflin. I guess Dunder Mifflin is her God happy place. Do I? <laughs> God bless her. God bless her. Love right, Heather. More shows. Um, I like that one. I like the originals. It's like Teeny Bop Vampire Diaries. Hey, there's no shame in that. I <laughs> you. I read Twilight. I got you. All right. Uh, what else? Um, oh, I like Young and Hungry. Young and Hungry is cool. Okay. Because I'm young and hungry. All right. You are stranded on a deserted island. Okay. I'm going to let you have a series of books and one personal hygiene product or tool. Tell me what they are. Um, Harry Potter series. Hands okay, down. word, word. All right. Uh, personal hygiene products. Or whatever. Deodorant. <laughs> Deodorant? You don't want the plants and the animals to smell you get funky? <laughs> I don't want to smell myself. <laughs> That's so honest and so wonderful. Okay, let me see what else I got to ask you. Uh, you have been very fun. Hey, what is your favorite thing to look up on YouTube and watch? Uh, workout videos. Workout videos. I like it. I like it. Um, what is your favorite thing that you have purchased on Amazon in the last year? Oh, um, the Brito water filter pitcher. Life changing. Okay. Changed your life, huh? Changed it. I am almost certain that if I had a cup of your Brit Brita water and then <laughs> like water hose water, I'd be like, same. <laughs> no. Yeah. Probably because not. see, because I'm old, Nicole, I grew up drinking out of a water hose. Did you know our mothers used to do that? 
I don't my mom didn't do that. Yeah, <laughs> I'm Capri old, Suns. right? I'm your mom's age. My mom used to make me drink out of it. Um, so give me, what are your hobbies? So like, I know for people, I know that you're graduating LSU. So you're trying to tie all that up online school now and all that stuff. Um, I know you work, you work at a local restaurant here in town. You also volunteer in our PSR program. So like, that's a lot of time. And then we've got to sleep, yeah. right? And we've got to watch the office, right? Got to. So with whatever time you have left, what a, give me a great hobby for quarantine time. Um, I really like working out and going, committing like an hour a day to just like de-stress and just like focus. Let's get a little peace on me. Um, I can verify that she's telling the truth because before we started this video, she was like, cool, let's do this because I'm going to run right after this. <laughs> Okay. All right. All right, girlfriend. Um, two more questions for you. Okay. What's the best thing you've eaten during the quarantine? Okay. So I haven't really been cooking as much as I used to because I mean, I'm locked up. I don't want to cook now Right. that I have all this time. I have probably had canes at least six times during this quarantine. <laughs> you said that like you need to go to, to reconciliation about that <laughs> because I'm so bad for you <laughs> is that why you're going on a run tonight yes I had it yesterday um, Chick-fil-a was closed <laughs> I've seen canes in my house a time or 12 uh, during the quarantine I'm not gonna lie to you okay but you know what I did not know this about you this has happened on every video while I'm doing the video there will be something happen that I'll learn something about this person that's one of my friends in, in a regular part of my life. You said, I haven't been cooking as much as I normally do. I didn't know you cook at all. So like, do you have a go-to recipe that's like your jam? I, um, so I have like uh, black bean burgers and I like to cook them on the skillet and then like cut them up tiny, put it in a bowl and then cut up an avocado and then fry an egg and then mash the egg up in the bowl and then put it like cheese on top. And it's really good. So is this, should we call this a Nicole bowl? Yeah. I don't even know what it is. My friends. No, know. I know what it is. They've ate it and they like it, but they're like, how did you even come up with this? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> that's a, um, that's like a new hashtag Nicole bowl right there. It's good. All right. All right. One more question. Are you ready? Yeah. If you could make anyone today, a say like, Pope Francis calls you and he's like, Nicole, what up? I need some suggestions. I need to canonize a saint. If you could canonize any person to be a saint right now, living or dead, Catholic or not, fictional or real, I don't know, you know, whatever. I mean, the whole world is your oyster. Who would you make a saint? Okay, you're going to think I'm lying about this, but I'm not. So you ready? I'm ready. I truly would highly recommend... Kevin, I really would. I mean that. I mean that. Like Kevin from Backstreet Boys or something? Or in Kevin, as in you? Get out of here. See, now that people... I'm serious. I'm serious. You are the only person I've ever met that has been an image on earth that reflects the closest amount I can think of what Jesus is like. Just you give so much love to everybody and so much happiness. And when you leave the room, everyone knows because everyone's laughing and smiling and in a good place. Thank you. I love you. <laughs> that means the world coming from you because, you know, because you're you. Thank you. That totally took me off guard. This is the point in the video every time that I would be like, St. Kevin of Denham Springs, pray for us. And it feels weird saying that now to myself. Wow. Um, thank you for doing this and being a young, vibrant part of our parish that has everything in the world to do. You're going to be the most incredible, empowered, awesome person on the planet. And you take the time to be such an example to our middle school girls. And by the way, middle school boys, because I always tell my boys, y'all, y'all like Miss Nicole, huh? Well, what kind of godly young man, you know, marries a yeah. woman like that? Well, you better be that kind of godly young man, right? So 
Um, thank you for all that you did. Thank you for this. We'll do a little video later about what this last year has been like for you, but, um, but like, just thank you for what you've added to my life. I love you so much. I love you. All right. I will see you soon. And I cannot wait to hug your neck. <laughs> this because boo quarantine right Boo quarantine all right i will see you soon i love you all right have a good one kev bye all right grace and peace